my dear students in this class let us try to learn the physical and chemical changes that occur during muscle contraction muscle contraction is a physico biochemical phenomenon it occurs in different phases and for this muscle contraction calcium ions are required and each and every muscle is innervated by axon and the space between axon and the muscle is called neuromuscular junction this neuromuscular junction is also called motor end plate this motor end plate secretes one neurotransmitter called acetylcholine now during muscle contraction the muscle should get excited that means the first step is excitation of muscle second step is formation of cross bridges third step is power stroke and the subsequent step is recovery stroke and it is followed by muscle relaxation now let us see how this reactions occur one by one normally it is found out that the muscle contraction occurs due to sliding of myosin and actin filaments over each other hence this is called sliding filament theory and uh, this was proposed by hansen and huxley we have learned that each muscle is inner innervated by axon and uh, the junction between uh, axon and uh, sarcolemma is called neuromuscular junction whenever the stimulus is received by axon axon transmits this stimulus to the neuromuscular junction or motor end plate that releases acetylcholine now this acetylcholine creates action potential in the sarcolemma under this action potential under the influence of this action potential the terminal cisternae of sarcoplasmic reticulum that stores calcium ions now releases calcium ions this is about excitability the first step in the muscle contraction coming to the second step formation of cross bridges now the calcium ions are released from terminal system ne get bound to the troponin c now in the presence of calcium ions troponin and tropomyosin are dragged away from the active sites of the actin we have already learned that there are certain uh, reactive spaces on the actin filaments and these are called active sites which are readily in a position to bind with myosin heads but in the absence of stimulus these are masked by the troponin and tropomyosin but when the stimulus is released and when there is generation of action potential in the sarcolemma and whenever calcium ions are released due to the binding of calcium ions to the troponin c both the troponin and the tropomyosin are dragged away from the active sites of the actin filament thereby exposing the active sites to the action with myosin heads myosin head now gets bound to the active site of the actin forming a complex called head active complex or acto myosin complex now this is called this binding of myosin head with active sites of the actin forms a cross bridge 
and these cross bridges are formed and collapsed they are formed and deformed alternately now when the myosin cross bridge is formed there is sudden physical changes that occur during this action during contraction the changes occur in the sarcomere the i band gets reduced in size whereas the a band remains as it is now let us go back to the formation of the cross bridge when calcium ions are released the troponin and the tropomyosin are simply dragged away from the active sites of the actin thereby facilitating the action of myosin head with active site of the actin now myosin head gets attached to the actin forming actomyosin complex and this is called a cross bridge now the myosin filaments drag the actin filaments that are attached to the z line vigorously towards the hansen's disc this is called a power stroke that means after the formation of the cross bridge the myosin filaments are pulling the actin filaments that are attached to the z line vigorously towards hansen's disc and this is called a power stroke this also requires atp that means when calcium ions are released the myosin orientation is changed first it binds to the actin filament that means the inactive myosin has become active in the presence of calcium ions this is the first change in the orientation conformation orientation of myosin filament later inorganic phosphate is released when inorganic phosphate is released parallelly this cross bridge is formed now again the myosin filaments drag the actin filaments attached to the z line vigorously towards hansen's disc and this is called power stroke coming to the recovery stroke the myosin cross bridge gets detached and again it gets bound to the atp that is atp is required even for muscle relaxation and now the recovery stroke happens that means the muscle myosin comes to its original position this is called recovery stroke both power stroke and recovery stroke require atp they require energy hence both the strokes are called uh, active strokes they are not passive these are active strokes and when the stimulus is disappear the z lines come to the normal position that is called relaxation now this attachment of myosin heads and formation of cross bridge and detachment of myosin head collapsing of cross bridge at regular intervals is called walk along mechanism it is also called ratchet mechanism ratchet mechanism constitutes power stroke and recovery stroke during repeated contractions oxygen will get exhausted within the muscle as a result uh, the muscle runs a short of oxygen and this is called oxygen debt under oxygen debt the muscle enters into an anaerobic phase forming lactic acid now this lactic acid that is formed under anaerobic phase gets accumulated within the muscle and this leads to muscle fatigue the lactic acid that is formed inside the muscle is taken to liver 
and there it is converted into pyruvic acid and subsequently into glucose. This is a mechanism of gluconeogenesis where glucose is formed from other than carbohydrate source. Later, the glucose that is formed in the liver is again converted into glycogen and it gets stored in the muscle again. Like that, the lactic acid shunting from muscle to the liver and uh, formation of glycogen and the gluconeogenesis and glycogenesis reactions that occur in muscle and liver are worked out by Cori hence this cycle is called Cori cycle and normally other uh, chemical changes also occur during muscle contraction because both the contraction and relaxations require ATP and this ATP gets broken down into adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate and energy. Creatine phosphate is the muscle phosphogen that is present inside the muscle that is responsible for rejuvenation of ATP for uh, regenerating ATP. Now the creatine phosphate combines with ADP forming ATP and creatine will be the byproduct in this reaction. Now this creatine combines with inorganic phosphate that is formed in the first reaction forming creatine phosphate. Like that any number of ATP molecules umpteen times are regenerated uh, because of the presence of muscle phosphogen namely creatine phosphate. But after death due to exhaustion of creatine phosphate ATP will not be regenerated. As a result, muscle will enter into permanent state of contraction and this permanent state of contraction of skeletal muscles after death is called rigor mortis. Rigor mortis gives a wonderful clue in postmortem regarding the modus operandi of the death and also time period of the death. These are the physico-chemical and the biochemical changes that occur during muscle contraction. Let me list out the fine points. Muscle contraction is a physico-biochemical interaction. The space between axon and the sarcolemma is called a neuromuscular junction or motor end plate and this releases acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is responsible for generating action potentials in the sarcolemma. Muscle contraction requires calcium ions and muscle contraction occurs in different phases namely excitability of the muscle, formation of cross bridges, power stroke, recovery stroke and relaxation and accumulation of lactic acid leads to the muscle fatigue. Thank you very much.